administration is also promoting do not cover a trip to the emergency room. They don't cover hospitalization. They don't, if you are pregnant, it doesn't co uh, cover maternity care or uh, birth in the hospital. So one expert was asked, well, isn't something better than nothing? They said, no, actually, having the healthcare.gov plan that ha covers all of your essential health benefits certainly better than having a junk plan. Consumers and they have targeted them for very serious cuts. They have now cut our navigator initiative across the country by 80 to 90 percent. This really doesn't make sense. Our navigators are the ones that go into rural areas, go into communities that uh, don't speak English, explain all of the options. They, are, they don't work for a particular insurance company. They work for you. And the lead navigator in the country has been right here at the University of South Florida, led by Jody Ray. And I wanted, I asked her to come uh, and talk to us about uh, what has happened this year. Uh, kudos to you, Jody, for doing what you did with fewer resources. But what we know is that all of these sabotage efforts and the undermining of protections with, for people with pre-existing conditions now are, are causing health care costs for everybody to go up. And we just can't sanction that. We've got to do everything we can to continue to fight to lower health care costs, those hard-earned co-pays and the health care premiums that, that families pay every day. So uh, I want to ask Jody Ray to come up and explain first what navigators do and then how difficult it has been to continue to provide that independent uh, advice to our neighbors all across the state of Florida with fewer funds from the Trump administration. Jody? Thank you, Congresswoman Castor. Uh, on behalf of the Florida Covering Kids and Families and the College of Public Health at the University of South Florida, I represent the consumer-focused health coverage enrollment navigators. And I appreciate the opportunity to share um, with you all the continued need to protect and strengthen the access to consumer health coverage. I am here to share and emphasize the importance of the work of navigators in connecting people to the health coverage that they only need, that they not only need but deserve. Every day, navigators have the opportunity to witness the life-altering impact of what gaining coverage means to the lives of Floridians who have been assisted with enrolling in health insurance. There is value and power within the enrollment workforce in helping consumers who reside in, in demographically and geographically diverse states such as Florida. For many consumers, enrollment simply would not be possible without the help of these individuals. And they serve as the first point of contact for many of the consumers seeking help. My experience is based upon nearly 20 years of providing assistance to some of the most vulnerable populations in the community across Florida by way of conducting and coordinating various enrollment and outreach efforts. The demand for coverage since the Affordable Care Act opened in 2013, the, uh, since it, with the uh, health insurance marketplace opened in 2013, has been extraordinary and continues to remind us uh, that that need still remains. Health insurance marketplace navigators are individuals who are trained and able to help consumers, small businesses, and their employees as they look for health coverage options. According to SOSIO, the Center for Consumer Information and Insurance Oversight, navigators play a vital role in helping consumers prepare applications to establish eligibility and enroll in coverage through the marketplace and potentially qualify for insurance affordability programs. They also provide outreach and education to raise awareness about the marketplace and refer consumers to health insurance ombudsmen and consumer assistance programs when necessary. These individuals and organizations are required to be unbiased. Their services are free to consumers. Navigators are professionals who are trusted resources in their communities. They come from within the communities they serve and know the populations who need assistance. <clears throat> Navigators go where people live, work, eat, and play to reach those individuals who would otherwise not have health coverage. And Navigators provide enrollment and outreach assistance to consumers in an objective manner while addressing specific linguistic and cultural needs. 
USF has made a concerted effort to partner with regional and local agencies that have multilingual resources and staff that have a rapport with diverse, underserved, and vulnerable populations of various races and ethnicities, as well as those with various socioeconomic, educational, and disability statuses. Navigators develop and maintain knowledge about the racial, ethnic, and cultural groups in their service areas, including each group's diverse cultural health beliefs and practices, preferred languages, health literacy, and other needs. More than 1.7 million consumers across the state of Florida have benefited from coverage, now available through the federal health insurance marketplace. Florida has historically ranked among the highest states with uninsured individuals who lack not only access to coverage, but needed appropriate health care. Navigators do so much more than just support marketplace enrollment. We refer individuals and families to Medicaid coverage and other insurance plans. Navigators are not selling any particular plans and do not receive compensation from insurers. This is not seasonal work. Navigators do not do this once a year, and this work is not singularly focused on only helping people apply for coverage during open enrollment. Navigators provide so much more to consumers and their families. Just because services are available and just because they now have coverage does not mean they understand what to do next when they are enrolled. Many individuals are enrolling to coverage for the first time. An essential role of the navigator is the coverage to care role and to help them understand coverage and care and navigate the complex system of care that we have in this country. Without navigators, many people would not know what picking up provider means. Without us on the ground, most individuals would not have a place to go find out why they may have just lost their tax credits and why their premiums doubled. Without people they trust like health care navigators, they would not know how to navigate the multiple networks they have when their children are in CHIP, one's in Medicaid, and maybe somebody's in the marketplace. We conduct community education outreach activities, and navigators are urgently needed for enrollment, which can be a very confusing process. Navigators work one-on-one -on -one with people in every corner of the state until they understand the complexities of health insurance, select providers, review networks to ensure all their coverage needs are met. They also help consumers file exemptions and appeals. So in conclusion, without consumer assistance, the, these models of, and systems of care that we see being proposed um, can fail to be effective without consumer assistance included. Leaving this piece out of the equation going forward, forward is short-sighted and fruitless. Navigators are reaching our most vulnerable populations in Florida. Over a third have ex of us have a, I'm sorry, we have an extraordinary opportunity before us to expand upon those milestones we've already achieved in the state. Um, and I would like to just reiterate that the uninsured rate for adults in Florida has decreased from, for those 18 to 64 year olds by 9.1% according to the Kaiser Family Foundation. So it's been impactful. Thank you. Terrific. Because I believe that the work of our navigators here at the University of South Florida and all across the state, all across the country, is so important, and because the, our issue with health care costs for families is so, uh, is, has been so difficult, I filed a bill, the Enroll Act, to ensure that our navigators stay on the beat, that we uh, push back on the Trump administration's deep cuts, to uh, navigators. It's called the Enroll Act. Uh, it will be marked up in the Energy and Commerce Committee in the coming weeks, and I anticipate it will be, uh, it will be debated on the floor of the House, and I hope that the House of Representatives will pass it. That bill will work in tandem with a bill I have filed that would outlaw these junk insurance plans, these short-term, limited-duration plans that masquerade as real insurance. They simply are uh, a place where you would really throw your money away because you think you're buying real insurance, but then when you read the fine print, those junk plans uh, don't cover the essential health benefits you need. The trips to the emergency room, being admitted to the hospital, uh, they have large co-payments and, and deductibles, and they're really not worth the paper they're written on. The other problem with these junk plans 
that uh, HHS Secretary Azar admitted to me last week is the fact that they allow insurance companies to discriminate uh, for a pre-existing condition like cancer, asthma, diabetes, and I challenged Secretary Azar. He said, yes, he admits that these short-term junk plans do discriminate, and I pushed back and I said, but wait a minute. Even though the Trump administration and Republicans in Congress tried to, uh, tried to eliminate that protection for pre-existing conditions, it remains the law of the land. It is still the law in America that insurance companies cannot discriminate against you if you have a pre-existing condition. But they are working in opposite of that right now by, by allowing and encouraging issuance of these junk plans. So these initiatives together should help uh, if they pass the House and we can somehow miraculously get them through the Senate, uh, they will help to lower health care costs for everyone. But Jody, I want to say to you today, I'm grateful for the, everything that you have done. You've been the inspiration in my bill, the Enroll Act, which is the Expand Navigators Resources for Outreach, Learning, and Longevity Act. We're going to make sure that our navigators stay on the beat, providing that independent, uh, free advice to families all across the country. So thank you very much. OK, anyone have any questions? Yeah, Representative Castor, so I want to make sure that we understand correctly, the law is I think they are illegal. I think when the Trump administration began rulemaking and they said, yes, we're going to allow insurance companies to offer these short-term plans, uh, that that is in uh, contradiction to the law. And they're going to be challenged all along the way. But the effort in Congress will be to, uh, to uh, outright uh, eliminate them. I think we need we need to do it, and it's a way to highlight the Trump administration's sabotage of the Affordable Care Act. So, real talk, what are the chances of it happening in the Senate? Uh, pro probably unlikely, but it will set the table for action in the coming years. And uh, I really I was flabbergasted that Secretary Azar just went ahead and admitted last last week that yes, these short-term plans will discriminate against people with pre-existing conditions. So I, it's important that all, all folks uh, understand what they're doing because there is some rhetoric from my Republican colleagues that said, oh, we believe in covering people with pre-existing conditions. Oh, of course. But then on the other hand, the Trump administration uh, is adopting rules that would allow that discrimination. That's wrong. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you, Jody.